Mark, I'm in now, right? It's all right, yeah, it's been a while, yeah. <laughs> so that's the first rod out. And I'll get the other one baited up and I'll show you the rigs and everything. So first off, I'll introduce you to the rods and the reels, right? New rods, you haven't seen them before, but they're not new, I've had them for a long time. Instead of uh, making money for Sonic now, I've decided to make money for Abu instead, right? <laughs> Here we go. Yabu Hellbender, yeah. It's a very soft rod. It says it casts 112 grams to 224 grams. Not if you froze it for a month, would it cast that? So no, it doesn't cast 224 grams. No, I have a six ounce lead in that and uh, it nearly broke the rod in half. And you've seen them before, the Daiwa Millionaire, yes. And it's loaded with 35 pound mainline, 100 pound leaders. That's this rig. Yes, the rigs are my flatfish rigs. And they're also, just for this type of beach here anyway, clean ground. This one here is the Pulley X, as in Wessex, right? And it's like a pulley up the top. Right, and then it's got a relay clip right there, and down the bottom it's just like a running ledger. And they two them clip down behind the lead weight on this here angel clip. Yep. Today the baits are frozen lug, my blow lug. I'm gonna list a whole lot of stuff in the, in the description now. There's gonna be links for the hairs, links for the rigs, links for the bait. It's flatfish season here in Denmark, and there's quite a few of them. The other day I was out messing around trying to catch some mackerel for some bait, and I caught some place on some mackerel feathers. So there's quite a lot of them around. Yeah, we get some worms out. Get some worms out. These are the worm skis, right? I'm gonna use two blow lugs. And like I said, I'll link how to process these worms in the description as well. Put them onto a bait needle. If you're new to the game, don't be afraid of bait needles. They're, they're not difficult. It's just like a straight hook. I don't really use them that often except for this type of thing here, but it, it kind of makes life a little bit easier on you if you're a beginner. You don't need to worry about busting the worms or anything else. It doesn't matter. If you burst a worm, it will just fish quicker. That's all. And if your worms are too big, like they can't be too big for flatfish, uh, you can bust them, gut them, and then they'll fish a little bit better for flatfish. So this is it. This is the flatfish hair. This is a, an innovation from a South African dingle dangle. And normally you just like whip the, uh, the bait onto the hair or the dingle dangle itself. But I came up with this way here so you can fish live or dead worms. This is an old camazan that I clipped the point off and bent into shape. That video will be linked in the description as well. That's a tension. That's it. Over the top. And then you take the head of the worm and you just hook it over the hook yes that sounded stupid and there you go you want the worm to stay on the hooks so when it sucks that into its mouth it's going to get the hook as well that's very important that's it that goes in the bait clip show you one more time just for giggles the hooks on this are a 1 -0 because the flatfish here are quite big and also there might be coddling at this time of the year there we go when I clip it down you can see what that looks like too Right, I'll do the bottom hook first, right? The angel clip as well, make that too. It comes down to meet the other one. The clips both face the same way. Uh, this rig extends when it hits the sea floor and it fishes a greater area. So that's it there, the Pulley X. These, uh, the rig body is 80 pound and that's 30 pound fluoro snoods. That's it, and a load of loomy crap. I'm not into beads. If you're gonna put attractant on your, your rigs, keep it on the rig body where the fish can see it. That's what I think anyway. So we get this one in the water. So uh, we see how we get on, but for now, I'm just lobbing it 100 meters or so. Just so long as you're into the sand and off the gravel, you'd be on the fish here anyway. So we get this one out and we start fishing. Just a quick tip for beginners. It doesn't matter if it's windy or not. If you cast out, you got bait clips. Just give them a little tap like that, just to make sure they come loose. And you haven't been wasting 20 minutes with the worms clipped into the bait. The fish will still have a go with them, but they obviously can't get the hook in their mouth. Yeah, do I have anything else to show you? No. I know, there is a slight problem with Denmark at the moment anyway. Uh, the water apparently is contaminated with something called PFAS, right? And it's uh, the same forever chemical that they use on non-stick pans, right? 
but me forever being optimistic and also liking to make use of stuff I threw out my non-stick pants <clears throat> because now the fish are non-stick instead if you eat non-stick fish out of a non-stick pan, you get twice as much forever chemicals in your body. So it's just the same as before. <laughs> yeah, you got to adapt, overcome. That's what I say. I won't be eating any flounder because they stay in around the coast, in close to the coast. Now at this time of the year, it's a good time for place and that. So also weaver fish, they're really good to eat. I like them too. My best weaver fish here in Denmark is 45 centimeters. A beast of a fish. And if you get stung by one that size, your hand will be thumping for a week. The small ones are okay, the big ones are horrible. So yeah, I got a fish on both rods in actual fact, but they seem to be quite small fish. It's not a very big fish at all. So I'm just going to leave them there for a while. Hopefully something better will come along. Okay. I'm very familiar with this beach. I've fished here quite a lot over the years. I'm not expecting any too many surprises, but this is one time of the year coming up to the solstice and just after the solstice where you can catch some quite amazing fish here one time I caught dogfish that might sound a bit strange to us who live on the British Isles but here in Denmark dogfish are very 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 rare three I got in one night amazing you get gurners here as well I got a 40 centimeter grey gurner here as well so we're gonna pull in the the lefty so I'll introduce you to this rig as well this one is the pulley P the P stands for Padanoster as you can see because it's got one here in the middle and it's got a pulley up the top so the pulley P right the Padanoster and then a pulley up the top yes and just the same hook set up and we got the pulley D which is a one down I have one of them in the bag if I need to get it out I'll use it I'm gonna get this bait in the water Woo. anyway so yep Yeah. We'll have fish soon, fish heads. So there's a fish on and we're gonna see if we get it in. I'd say it's a dab, I hope it's a decent one. Yep, we're in. Let's get down to the water. Ah, I think it might be a place. It's pulling quite a bit. Yeah, I think it might be a place. Oh, I think it might be a coddling. I have to pump the rod, it's definitely not a dab anyway. So I've probably got a, a coddling. Or a nice place, one or the other. Here it comes. What have we got? What have we got? Big flounder. What is it, a bass? What is it? Oh, it's a weaver. Okay, they will do. Nice weaver fish. I was only talking about them, right? There you go. I'll have him. They're very tasty. They are a bit poisonous, but very tasty. Bit of a scrap out of them too. So I'll take weavers as well all day long. There's no legal size limit for them either. I oh, could me them and everything else. I am going to show it because I'm a bit of a daredevil. Right, so there's the, the spines, right? When you process these fish, you have to make sure you cut behind that very last one there. Right like that, okay? Got two spikes here, one on each side. As you can see, it's flaring his gills there. And these boys up here. That's it there. That fish is dead, although he's still gonna flop until I pass the wire through him. So now I have to put him onto the shopping board so I can cut his tail. I'm gonna clip the back of his tail. Just so you can bleed the fish. So you have to be like super duper 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 careful with these fish. Their sting isn't actually that bad as it goes. The big one's much worse. This is a fairly decent one. There you go. There's the wire going all the way down the spinal cord. You just move it backwards and forwards to destroy the spinal cord and stop the signals destroying the flesh. That's it, basically. Anyway, so that's it there. One weaver fish. I don't mess with them now. Uh, try and cut their head off or anything. I wait till I go home and I got a chopping board and something more safe. So that's one weaver fish anyway. You'd like uh, to see a better version of what I just did there. I'll link that video in the description as well. It's how they could jam my fish. And um, I got a fish on the other rod as well. I'm gonna cast it. I'm just, I'm just gonna leave it. The circuit hooks work perfectly if you just leave them. So I'm gonna rebate this one and cast it out. 
and then get back onto that one. Yes. That's it. Got a fish on deck. That's what matters. There's something to eat. And they're, they're quite seasonal, the weavers, so uh, I imagine they have less uh, non stickness to them. <laughs> the last ones they cooked, they didn't stick to the pan either, so you never know. Well, um, these hooks are too big for the small flatfish that are out there, which is, my, which is why I use them to keep them off. In the the autumn and the winter I'll use smaller hooks um, just to catch some fish but now there's a chance of some good flatfish and the big dabs in the place they have no trouble taking that hook at all and it keeps the smaller flounder and the dabs off and it's also big enough for coddling and also the weaver fish so that's what I'm going with I get a lot of bites but I'm not getting a lot of hookups it just means that the fish are too small so I'm just gonna wait for the Sun to, to start to drop and then the bigger boys will come along So I'm getting a huge bite now on the left rod. There you go. So I'm gonna lift into it. We've been doing it now for about five minutes. These rods are incredibly soft, so it's not necessarily a huge fish, but it's probably a weaver though. Nice weaver or something. Not complaining. Yeah, he's on. Yeah, he's something on anyway. I think it's a flatfish. Dab, he goes straight back. It's legal, but I think I'm just going to put it straight back. It's not big enough for me. There we go. Nice little dab. Always with the circles. No damage done to the fish whatsoever. Huge bite off them, right? <laughs> One dab. Get it back out again. Hey! Now I only just cast it out and it's already started, so we're gonna have quite an evening. There you go. Oh! Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> That's gotta be a weaver, man. That's a slack line. Might be a cuddling. I hope it's a big place. Yep, we're on. The fish are moving in now. The tide's start starting to drop. The fish in the fallen tide. The tides here in Denmark are minute. Uh, this is a really big one. I think it's like 45 centimeters. <laughs> here it comes. Right him in. What have we got? Oh, it's a big flatfish. <laughs> That's a place. It's a nice big place. Din dins, din dins, din dins, din dins. Yes. Nice big place. Yes. Yes. Oh, what a beast. <laughs> He's 40 anyway. Beautiful fish. So, i uh, get this guy Yikiji made as well. Let me get this out of his face. I've shown this in other videos, right? When these are juveniles, uh, larvae, they're round fish, right? And then uh, they mutate and the eyes move over to one side of the body. But the brain stays where it was as if it's a round fish. So their brain is actually right, right between there. Yep, that's it, he's dead. See his tail curling up? Fish is dead now. So now I'm going to cut his tail and pass the wire. Let's go, another place, let's go. I'm gonna measure that fish now after this. Right. Right out where I put it before. Let's see if we get another fish. No, no, another place which is great. I love place fishing, I think it's brilliant. I think it's a fantastic fish. Right, get the measure. Mind don't get spiked by your man. Right up to there. Where we got? Oh, not 40, but 38. Not bad still. 
time, huge slack line on the other road. Yeah, we're on. This beach gets so hectic sometimes. Is he still there? Yeah, he's off, is he? There's still something there. Oh, oh, oh. oh another nice place. <laughs> yeah, nice one. I'm keeping that one too. That's a dab, it's a dab. A huge dab. It's mine nonetheless. Gotta eat something, right? Look at that size of that guy. Boom. <laughs> it's like a Norwegian one. Yeah, you, buddy. Gonna, he's gonna go the same way as the rest of the lads. So the circles in the corner of the mouth is always, yes, nice. Oh, this rod is gonna go over to the place where the plates are and the dabs are, which is over this side. I'm gonna put this guy out there and uh, pretty soon I'll have a fish on it. Yes. We got another place. Better. There we go. Yeah. So into another fish. Not a particularly good one, but fish nonetheless. Haha, <laughs> I haven't been cold all year. <laughs> Where are you? Oh yeah. Oh, it's a bit better than I thought. I think it might be a weaver. Yeah, here we go. Come on. Oh, what is it? It looks well different. What is it? <laughs> that, okay, <laughs> that's not what it looked like when it came in anyway. That's two uh, flounders. It looked like one really long eel. I thought I caught a, a big silver eel or something because they look like they came together. Like, Okay, two flounders straight back to the sea for them. Goodbye! <laughs> Let's see if we can get something a little bit more interesting than flounder. There's a bit of a crosswind now. Let's put the brakes on a little bit more. So we settle it in. Get a nice bite on the right. There you go. <laughs> and left. And right. And left. And right. And left. And right. <laughs> So we just let him do his thing, that's all right. You know, if you're not used to it, it takes some while to get that bait into their mouths and they're pulling at it and they're jumping on their rig and they're just causing a bit of a commotion until they maneuver around and get that bait into their mouths. And if you're using a long J hook, it takes a little bit longer. These uh, circles are quite short and the hair is soft and it sucks into their face, but it is quicker, but you still have to give them time. Yeah, there's a flounder on it and I want to get it off it so I can get it out and hopefully catch something better. Flounder or a small dab or a small flounder. Am I wrong? Yep. <laughs> I never get tired of being wrong. It's great to be wrong all the time. It's my favourite thing. Might be too, too small flounder. What have we got? Get him in on this wave. Yeah, ah, oh, what we got going? Little babies, little dabbies. Ah, state of I hate this weed, man. On oh, the heap. Get them back in the drink. More dabs, back to the drink. Goodbye, oh no. <laughs> so, I've got a fish on the other one as well. Hopefully it's a better than the two little dabs I had. The weed is also being a pain again, but it's a fairly nice fish though. Or is that a giant lump of weed? I just need one more for the tea, and that'd be grand. What we got, what we got, what we got, what we got? Something okay anyway, probably another flounder. They always come with the weed. Yeah, another flounder. Ugh. Anyway. And he's tied me rigging a knot. Nice one. So there he goes, another one unharmed into the sea. If I was to show you unhooking all these fish, I'd be here for the rest of the day editing this crap. Anyway, bye bye. So it's just gone eight o'clock. I ain't gonna fish up until about half nine, ten or something like that. And uh, get a nice bite, but uh, I think it's flounder again. Um, I've retired one of the rods because of the weed and the flounder. All the good fish effect off. It's just left me them lads. 
they're not even good size they're just like yeah but i've had like i don't know 10 or something in a row or something like that Bit fed up with it. yeah the weeds moved in and the flounder with it and i can't get a cast without picking up a double shot of flounder it seems so i'm gonna wind one up as far as i can i'm gonna do a pencil cast if i didn't get another fish maybe a weaver or another place or another dab or something you're looking in the wrong direction hey as always yes you lot pay attention Oh, bloody hell, that was a huge bite. Gotta be a place, man. Okay, okay. That's a proper fish. So, at the end of the session, I will count up how many worms I used. I started at about four o'clock. Count how many worms I used between then and, um, and when I leave. Just, just to make a point here, like two worms each rig, each cast, okay? I think up till now I've used 30, right? And I've only got another hour or so left to fish. So wraps of 10 I've got. If I was fishing the way a lot of other people fish with like two or three worms on each hook, I would have burnt through twice as much bait. And whether you're pumping, digging it yourself or buying it, it's still more effort, more time, more money. And you don't catch any more fish. Just one worm <laughs> per hook, that's it. Session's gonna come to an end pretty soon and I'm gonna try to get another fish so I'm putting out the second rod again and I think the weed has eventually disappeared just need one more and it'll be good see nice another dab another place another weaver anything but a flounder okay last cast right rod and then we're gonna have a last cast left rod too <laughs> so that's it bon voyage set that up there so we're gonna do a worm count and see how many worms i've used i got two two left for the for the last cast so that's one, two, three, four, five, 50 worms. That's what I used on this session. That's it. Two rods, 50 worms. I don't know how much worms cost these days, but I imagine it's loads of money. Especially if you use like 80 worms in a session or something. I used to do that. I didn't catch any more fish though. <laughs> All I did was lose money. Oh, they're rattling away. One more decent fish and I'll be happy. Happy, happy, happy. It's been a great session, a lot of fish, but I would have preferred less bedinkers and less fl fl flounders. Yeah. See what's on the lefty. Has only been out a little while, so. But they've been munching away at it. Oh, that's nice. That's a, that's a good fish. Now it's been using the light tackle and this little teeny tiny reel. They cast so well though. Oh, this is a nice fish. It stays on the hook. Here we come. No, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Ah, oh, the bloody lead or not. Ah, oh, it's a nice one. Ugh. It's a flounder. And uh, now we let him go. Bugger, I'm not eating flounder. No. <laughs> That's it. No eating flounders. Right. Goodbye. Here you go, buddy. Ah, oh, so many bloody flounder. I don't know how many fish I've caught. Lots. We call it lots. Maybe 20 or something. I'm not sure. Loose. Anyway, we've got some more bait on and get it out. The sun's going down over the North Sea and it's time to get a last fish for me. <laughs> Woo! I mean, there's a disturbing amount of fish out there today, but they're all, well, not all brutal, but most of them are. After the, the, the last half of the tide, it was just awful. Usually it's the best. There's a lot of fish, but like, they're all stinky fish. Right, so last cast. See what it produces. Oh, 
There you go. Lovely reels. Not a sound out of them. It's fantastic. But you'd expect that for the bloody money, right? 350 quid. Are they 400 quid now or something? Ridiculous. If only they could make them retrieve like a Meg 525. I'd pay 600 quid for it. <laughs> no problem. Well, I suppose you can't have power, finesse, and everything else. So, all hail. The Daiwa 7HT Meg 5000. Uh. <laughs> That's the new reel. It's coming out in the market. I've invented it. A million flatfish. Ah! Really nice bite. On the right. Buffavade. Let's see if he's on. Yep. What have we got? Go! It's a decent dab. <laughs> oh, you got him. Oh, you got him. <laughs> so I'll get him in me focus. Hey, oh, he's bleeding anyway. Oh, well. You come with me, buddy, regardless. Eh. 27. The legal limit is ridiculous, don't worry about it. He's bleeding anyway, so. So I'm just gonna bring it in now, I'm fed up. See what we get for last cast fish. Quite decent, actually. <laughs> Here he comes. Come on, stay there, stay there, stay on, stay on, stay on. That's oh, decent. Oh, it's two. Double shot to end with. Yips. Oh, nice dab. And a flounder. <laughs> Feet. Oh, is he diseased? Ah, feck. Oh, well. Looks like he's going back as well. There you go. Oh, it's a place. A little place. A little place. <laughs> you get him back. Straight away. Yeah. Goodbye. He sorted himself out, don't worry. I hope this guy's not diseased anyway, because I could do with another fish. Looks like more of a wound than a disease. That's a wound. Ah, do you know what? I'm gonna let him go. I'm gonna let him go. I got enough to sustain me. Goodbye. Go ahead, fuck off. Hey. Right, so that uh, brings the session to an end. So, I hope you enjoyed it. It's great to be back on familiar ground. Wherever you are in the world, remember, I'll see you on the beach. All right, bye.